Hopefully by now you've had the chance to go to the Adobe website and download the public beta of Adobe Photoshop CS3. Uh, if not, you can do so by going to labs.adobe.com or you can go to the ActionFX website. I have links to the beta and I also have links to new reviews and feature highlights, things like that right on the page. And I've also made some new presets specifically for Adobe Photoshop CS3. Uh, layer styles, uh, shapes, actions, that sort of thing, uh, paintbrushes, and you can download those off the main site, the site of actionfx.com, the main page. Okay, something I want to show you today is a new feature in CS3, and this has to do with non-destructive filters, or the ability to edit filters on a single layer even after they've been applied. Uh, this is very cool. used to be you'd have to duplicate multiple layers, run different filter effects, and then those effects would be hardwired into that layer. Well, that's not the case anymore. Allow me to show you. Before um, we run any filters on this layer, note that I'm still working with the background. used to be you'd have to change it to layer 1, do things like that manually, uh, before you could do anything uh, regarding filters. You couldn't edit this background, but what I can do here is convert this background to smart filters, okay? And Photoshop's going to do that automatically. This little icon right here is a smart object thumbnail. It basically converted this layer to a smart object, okay? And now we can go ahead and run filters on this thing. And as I go, I'll, I'll kind of describe what's going on. You'll see how cool this is in a second. All right. First, let's just go ahead and create a blur. All right, plain old-fashioned Gaussian blur. And we'll just blur out about 10, somewhere in there. Uh, we'll just type it in, and I'll click OK. OK, I've blurred my model out. OK, let's take a look at the layers palette and see what happened here. Still working with that original background layer. But what's this? OK, we've got sm smart filters. Uh, shows up, turn them on and off just like you would anything else by clicking on the eye. But we have a layer mask now attached to the filter, okay? And if you're savvy with layer masks, as you've uh, probably played with those a little bit before, we can select that mask and then using a black or a gray paintbrush, let's reduce the opacity a little bit. I'll reduce the flow a little bit. I can paint away the effect right in the mask. So say I want her hair blurred out a little bit. I want to gradually blur it into the background here. So we can put the focus on her face, not on her clothes, not on her flyaway hair, not on the background, simply by painting in the mask after applying the Gaussian blur. Now note, we can turn this off at any time. Okay and you can edit that mask however you like. Okay? It has done no damage to the original layer. Okay? Very cool stuff. If we go down here and we actually see the filter that we've applied, the Gaussian Blur, we can turn this on and off just like uh, turning on the whole small smart filter. If we turn off the smart filter, say we have multiple uh, filters applied, that'll turn them all off if we click this. This will just click off or turn off the Gaussian blur. Okay, we'll we'll run another filter here in a minute. By double clicking that Gaussian blur, I can go ahead and change those settings. Okay, so say I want to increase the blur, kind of really, <laughs> really mess it up here a little bit. So she's just kind of just her face and things are fading out of the background. Or I can just go ahead and say, yeah, I like those original settings maybe bump it up to about 25 and click OK. Excuse me. Alright. So we can edit that uh, blur on the fly as needed later. Okay. You've got this little icon right here uh, to the right of the filter. Let's see what happens when we double click this. Now this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And I'll tell you why. 
So what do we have here? For that filter alone, okay, for this specific filter, we can alter the opacity and we can change blending modes. Just change the blending mode of the filter without affecting the rest of the layer. It is very cool. We can set this to overlay. We can see what kind of effects going on. And you'll note we also have two new blending modes down here at the bottom of the list. Lighter color and darker color. Okay. Let's go ahead and try a darker color. Just kind of see what happens. Lighter color. So it's going to emphasize the highlights in lighter color and, and uh, emphasize the darker points in the other. But all right. I'm just going to go ahead and go to soft light and I'll click OK. So it's very cool to have that kind of control because as you'll note we haven't changed any opacity or blending mode to the actual layer. We just did it to the filter and that's very cool. Alright, one more point before uh, I duck out of here. I mentioned that you can add more filters and this is definitely true. Let's go ahead and go to filter and let's say we want to add some noise. I don't know why you want to do that, but we'll just go ahead and add some noise to the background that we've blurred. Okay. And we'll call it Gaussian and monochromatic. And I'll click OK. Alright. So again, if we turn this eye off, they'll shut off all our filter effects. Okay. Or I can simply turn off the Gaussian blur or the add noise. If I don't like those, okay. And I can change the blending mode just on that filter. If I just want a little noise, I might set it to soft light at 50% and click OK. And that is the first look at smart filters in Photoshop CS3. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, uh, stop by actioneffects.com and grab some goodies for the new program. Take care.